Okay, uh, very pleased to have uh, Dr. Alex joining us today to talk about uh, advanced WebRTC testing with Kite. Uh, if you don't know Dr. Alex already, you certainly should. Uh, the blog uh, WebRTC by Dr. Alex and also founder of Cosmo Software, uh, member of the Sanders bodies and, and certainly a thought leader in, in uh, the development space here. So definitely looking forward to this talk. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me, Aaron. Um, hi, everybody. Um, I oscillate between summer and winter, so you might alternatively me, see me like this or like that. That's my incognito mode. Today I'm kind of in between, not cold enough, but it's going to get there. Um, I had a lot of different roles uh, with respect to WebRTC after a PhD in video coding, so I know a few about video coding and I'm still learning from people like Lorenzo on the telecom side of things. And I've been having a lot of fun uh, on WebRTC for the biggest part of the decade starting in 2012 at the time where WebRTC was still uh, exciting means it didn't work. Uh, now it's working a little bit better. Uh, you heard a lot of wonderful examples by a lot of different people that tell you we went from trying to make it work to make it work better and that means we need to have different kind of testing because what we're going to test is getting a little bit more um, complicated. Supposedly, that's Ludovic that should be speaking here. He's my R&D. He's been supervising a lot of stuff. He's also French. That happened to good people. Um, and also we're with a background on image processing and signal processing. That's why we had a, a tendency to go back to the comfort zone and work on uh, image quality and things like that more than the RTP, RTCP packet that still leaves us a little bit shaking as a imposter syndrome uh, <laughs> symptoms. Right. We like to give back. We're giving back in many ways. And most of the things we're going to show you today are uh, done based on open source and free software. So that means we, you can all use it, make it your own, and put it in your uh, product services, make consulting on top of it, just have fun. Um, we also publish um, because we like to be thorough and to be peer review and to get feedback for the scientific community. So today, those are the five articles that are going to be um, explain a little bit more in detail and we're going to show you the code that goes with it and they're all about uh, WebRTC testing or WebRTC quality or things like that. So there was a big revolution with WebRTC. WebRTC was the first API that would bring a P2P uh, communication in the browser. So before that browsers could do their own test on their own. Web developer will test their web app on one browser at a time separately possibly in parallel, but the browser would not talk to each other because there was no such API in the web to talk to each other. So you would talk to a, to a server or you would talk to yourself and that was it, right? So the first problem uh, were very simple. It doesn't connect or I don't have, I don't have any media, right? Um, and then there was no existing test, really, in uh, the available tool, whether at the standard committee or inside the browser vendor themselves, to test those, those, those connections. To give you an example, Firefox was banning any network interaction for the test suite because network was bling, bringing some variation, non-deterministic variation to the test, making them flaky. So I say no network. It's a little bit difficult to test a nice connection without network. So obviously, they were not ready for that. Uh, Safari, as far as I know, is still tested on machines that do not have access to the internet uh, and not even to the LAN for security reasons and things like that. So it makes it difficult for the QA team to test again a nice connection. So that was the beginning of the beginning. So one day at the W3C technical meeting in Lisbon, I think it was 2015, something like that, I say, okay guys, our, our bodies are testing today. How many test we would like to, to test, how many use cases, how many pairs, if we only want to do P2P, one-to-one, -one, with a minimum amount of browsers on a minimum amount of operating system, uh, how, many, how many pairs is that? Well, that's around 500 pairs. Okay, so with the tools we have today, right, with the test suite we have today, how many could we be testing? Well, the answer was, well, we can only really test things that run on the same computer, so Edge on Windows 10 against Safari on Mac, forget about it. Uh, mobile is, has the same problem, so long story short, we can only, if we were perfect with the current tool, test 23% of all those cases we should be testing. Okay, and then how many do we actually test? Well, six. 
and mainly on Debian, which, as you know, is the operating system of choice for all our moms out there and represent fantastically everybody that uses social media in the world. So that was not good. And that's at this time that we got a, oh, my God, moment within the, the standard committee and said, we need to do something about it. And we came together, Cosmo and, and Google, to develop something called Kite, which was a tool that was specifically made for communication between browsers or application. So the idea is I need to have a test that is written to run in two different apps in parallel asynchronously because there is one caller and one callee so they cannot do the same thing they should wait for each other they should be synchronized and so on so there was a very specific use case and it should not be limited by any app it should not be limited to the web it should not be limited to a specific back end or signaling process or so on and so forth right so we we came with kite which is an interoperability testing engine. Karoshi is the, the word in Japanese that means death by overwork, which really was what WebRTC was at the time, not anymore, even though some people might disagree with that. Nowadays, it's pretty, it's pretty smooth. It's been out there for several years now. It's all open source. The IP belongs to Google. Um, it supports not only web app, but native app and desktop and mobile. So today, if you want to test a web app, with Chromium, it's pretty easy. So you can do Chromium to Chromium. But then, you know, people love the iPad. So you have to test on Safari. And then there is 50% of the apps that are actually native apps. So you need to test also the native app against the web app and all the possible uh, uh, metrics. So as far as we know, Kite is the only uh, framework that allows you to test all the collection of native and web, mobile and desktop uh, against whatever backend you want. We provide a lot of tests and tutorials. The test report are nice nowadays. It used to be uh, a JSON uh, in, in VI. With the, with the time, we understood that people like to click. We have developer level uh, dashboard like that. So developer are different from CEO. CEO want to see big numbers with percentage. Uh, developer want to see uh, the log <laughs> with the actual error message on the machine like if they were there. So we capture the console log if it's, a, if it's a, a web app, we capture other stuff if it's another app, and we bring it to you directly in the dashboard with the result of the test. You can filter, just give me the test that didn't pass, that didn't pass because the test fell and not because the um, Safari crashed, you know, for example, and then let's, let's go dig into the error message and see if there's a problem. But we also have some uh, CEO people looking at it. And so we have some other dashboards that are more functional. So this was the report for this year, W3C technical plenary to the WebRTC group. Out of all the tests and all the, the configuration we ran, uh, Mac, uh, Firefox 69, Windows, Firefox 69, Mac, Firefox 71, and so on and so forth. There's more than that. We have more than 35 active configuration right now we run every day. 67% around were passing. And then we can take a look then in terms of uh, a type of failure, if it's a product defect, a media issue, a stream issue, and so on and so forth. So this is fully automated. You get the dashboard in the code for free as well. Just have fun there. Um, that's the same thing for the W3C, but the developer point of view, where we run the actual W3C test suite, the WPT, uh, but inside Kite, so with all the possible browser, including mobile, which WPT does not do otherwise, and we give the error message on the right. So here again, we filter, and this is Android Chrome 77. You see that was tested against all the desktop um, browsers, for example. By the way, good news, WebRTC is getting there. Uh, here is the difference between last year and on the top and, and this year on the bottom. Four out of four, the last column on the right is the number of tests that all the four browsers pass. It was zero last year, zero, 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 zero everywhere, right? And this year, on the core one, which is WebRTC, we have more than half, right, passing, with the four browser already passing them. And then you have a lot where three browser out of four are passing the test and so on. So the WebRTC group is pretty happy. But to be able to have that kind of uh, uh, result, you need to have visibility and you need to test across. We do that also for more advanced problem. 
The, the second problem of the WebRTC spec that only appear later is that it has a section that requires more than a browser. So in WebRTC 1.0, you have a simulcast section. The browser can send simulcast, but they cannot receive simulcast. That means you need to have a media server in the middle, an SFU, that implements something to test and to only relay one of the stream that was sent. That was also new to the, to the web community, and that was also a problem for everybody. So you need to be able to test the reaction of some of the feature to uh, bandwidth adaptation, uh, to bandwidth variation, to packet loss, to jitter, and so on. And if possible, you want to do it in a control environment to check that the, the algorithm is actually doing what it's supposed to do. So the implementation of simulcast, the implementation of bandwidth estimation of congestion control uh, require that you have a control over the network environment, maybe in a programmatic way, to be able to test that. And so that's the main goal of the talk today, is the network instrumentation attached to Kite to show you how you can do that. And what you're looking at right now is the compliance card of all the open source SFU against the W3C and IETF spec. So we do that with the media server developer at every IETF hackathon, and we try to keep it updated every, every three months. So of course the Janus team is always there because they're the one dealing with the audio and video setting for IETF anyway. We are already there, Midus, but then this time in Singapore, we're gonna have the Intel team coming from Shanghai to participate with a newly open source WebRTC SFU to see how, how they ride against the, the standard and to have an environment where they actually get visibility on some of the bugs that they cannot otherwise reproduce. Colstat.io has been doing this um, website on top of Kite as well, so they put a different front end and a different dashboard, but basically they're checking the GetStat implementation in every browser to make sure that they're compliant since the service depends on the compliance and no regression of the GetStat API. And now uh, we also extended it for load testing, right? So load testing is more, instead of testing the uh, client side, you're going to test the server side we test the, the usual open source people with them, so we give them six months to upgrade and fix any bug we found and so on before. And actually it worked pretty well. So you see, for example, Janus on the left-hand side, which was the original result, was going down very quickly, but eventually by the end of the six months, it was behaving uh, fantastically. And that's because we, f we, we didn't find a new bug. There was a bug they were aware of, but we could characterize it and we could work with them and reproduce the result to make sure that now they were faring much, much better. There are other customers using it right now. They're very happy at the end when they found all the bugs. Um, now, the problem when you want to do real-time evaluation is that the GetStat API is fantastic and for Colstat or Ohio, they have everything you need. That means everything at the network level can be real-time updated with every RTCP or RTP packet. You have a question? Um, no, not really. With the way we define Kite, you instrument the application. Right, so as long as you have a web app and we get access to the peer connection, that's enough for us to reproduce all the tests. Here we like that it was open, we didn't have to modify their code. Now we've been very careful to test them in the same environment, so installing them on the same virtual machine, on the same data center, with the same network, everything else being equal is, is the key here. We also limit it to a specific use case. So here we tested video conferencing we had a separate run and paper for the streaming because one way, one too many, or end to end is, is a very different uh, use case and not all the SFU are made to cover all the, the use case. Does that answer your question? Or maybe I should answer, should those WebRTC servers be doing more testability? At this stage, we haven't been blocked by that. We haven't found any server that didn't have everything we needed to run those tests. For AV1, which I'm going to speak a little bit later today, yes, there will be a requirement for some improvement to be able to test. So, real-time evaluation. Real-time evaluation of network is in the guest.api, you're good. Now, real-time evaluation of the media 
uh, quality is more difficult, especially for video. Uh, you have the usual metric, SSIM uh, or VMAF by Netflix that has been very um, successful recently into giving a score that is close to the human perception of the quality of a frame. Now those two have uh, the same limitation is that they require to have the reference frame to compare to. And so if you have some jitter or if you have some frame drop or things like that, you need to have an exact match, otherwise your metric is wrong. So it's not a call quality, it's a frame quality metric. So we developed with Ludovic a new metric uh, that we train, so it's AI and ML based. We train the metric against the data set so it doesn't need to have uh, the reference frame. And so you don't have to do all the readjustment of the frame, so putting a quote or putting a number to make sure it's the same frame with the reference frame to do the computation. And more importantly, you can do it on the fly. So if you do it post-mortem, you don't care, but if you want to do it in real time to provide a, a, a video quality metric that you can act on right away, uh, this makes the difference. So you don't need, we call that blind metric, that means you don't need the reference, and it gives you exactly, of almost exactly the same score than VMAF would give you, right, but without all the mechanics and in real time. So we had to do a lot of things to actually extend Kite to be able to give you the same measurement that the, the usual traditional broadcast uh, slow, very high latency technology will give you uh, in real time. So now you have the basic connection interoperability problem solved. You go from a binary world where either it works or it doesn't work to 50 shades of gray, or usually five shades of gray, right? The most core, you know, how many stars do you put to this? So the key to the user experience is the perceived video quality and network adaptation, right? So that's where you go, now it's working, now I'm in the call, and then suddenly it's getting pixelized, I have that robotic voice, I have all those problems that we experience every day. Those are all related to how the client or the application is adapting to a problem that usually happens at the network level, right? So you need to have a good bandwidth estimation, you need to have a congestion control, you need to be able to use simulcast, SVC, and so on and so forth, which is things that people don't really care about until they're in the call. So now we're starting to see a lot of questions about that. And really, what people want to do is this. You know? So once upon a time, uh, Emil from GT said that GT was much better than Zoom in, in many aspects. And he got challenged to prove that. And his answer was that video, I don't know if it's running actually. No, it, it doesn't, sorry. Where they actually, so you see they have to put a QR to make sure they have the same frame and to synchronize the, the frame quality metric and so on. But the idea was one of the user experience is how good or fast you react to a bandwidth drop, right? And how fast you come back to normal once the, that you come back to the normal bandwidth. And he was showing that with a network limiter app that is provided by Apple on the Mac, by manually dropping the bandwidth, uh, GTC was able to adapt twice faster than Zoom, and when he putting the bandwidth back up, he was able to come back to full quality twice faster than, than Zoom. And for him, that was also a metric. But most of the people do not take that metric into account yet, because measuring it and triggering the, the setting mm -hmm. is difficult. Right, and that's what the network instrumentation is for. So what we wanted to do with Kite is to extend Kite so that any item involved in the system under taste, being a client on desktop, on mobile, a web app, a turn server, a media server, each could have their own setting, not only in terms of firewall and NAT, but also in terms of bandwidth, jitter, delay, and packet loss. We wanted those to be controlled and programmatically changeable. So you can start with 10 megabytes available in terms of bandwidth, suddenly drop to 500K, and then decide how fast you will ramp up to test if the bandwidth evaluation was actually fitting what the reality was, and to test the reaction, the adaptation from the WebRTC stack, if it's a browser, or from your own implementation. So, a video is worth 1,000 words but I don't have internet access yet, right, expected. And I did something I shouldn't have.
So those slides are going to be online. We actually made uh, three, video, three different videos, one for Janus, one for GTC, and one for Meduse, because we, don't want, we want to be fair for everybody, where we were starting at uh, 1,700 kilobytes of available bandwidth, dropping to 800 or something like this, and coming back slowly and show all the, 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 the quality of the video was, was coming back. Um, to help people use those difficult tools, so those tools are very difficult. The reason why people don't do that and just say, hey, sorry, you have a problem with your network. I can see there's packet loss and there's nothing I can do about that. We don't know where it comes from and so on. It's because it's really difficult to reproduce and to actually control it in a control environment. So Kite is going to provide you that. But if you have to have three PhDs to actually manipulate the stuff and know five different programming language, nobody's going to use it really. And we're gonna speak with the different uh, SFU developers and that's going to be. So we wanted to make it easier for people that don't have a PhD in telecom to go there and do everything with a few click. So we created a grid manager, which is a UI, not only for Kite itself, but also for setting up the grid. Okay, I need an iPhone 6, I need this, I need that, right? So that's the grid part. You write your own test, you cannot escape that, but then you can upload the test and run it there anytime you want, right? So you set up your grid, you, you have different option. They already know how many, how many computer you have attached. If you don't have a grid, you can connect to um, source lab or commercial services like that. We have a grid, we can run access to our grid to you if you need special devices. We in Asia, we have a lot of Android devices you will never see here. Um, anyway, you can choose it with a few click. Once you're done uh, with that, you add the configuration of your network uh, to prepare your uh, bandwidth testing or packet loss uh, scenario, maybe your firewall setting and so on and so forth. You upload your test, it's Java, so each of the tests can be uh, developed separately, uploaded as a jar file and you're done. We also support JavaScript test nowadays, so if you want to write in JavaScript or in Java, most of the young people are not very comfortable with Java. They're more comfortable with JavaScript and most of the old people don't know what JavaScript is about except clicking buttons. So we have the best of both worlds, by the way. And finally, you have all the reporting dashboard that we showed before. So we have different one. We have dashboard that's going to take the server metric, dashboard that's going to take the client metric and you put it together again in the same interface. So the idea is really now to democratize the tool so that most of the people can go and make their WebRTC application faster or report bugs to the browser faster uh, whenever there is. So that, for example, make testing against Canary on a daily basis a click on a button. What we do with a lot of clients that have adopted the Kite nowadays, we use it for regression test as well. So when they have a bug that is difficult to reproduce, they tell us the scenario, we write the network instrumentation scenario for them until we reproduce the bug. Once it's reproduced, we give them the corresponding test. They put it in a regression test that they run every day or every week or before every release to make sure that that bug was fixed and stay fixed, right? And so every time you write a new, a new test, it's not lost. You reuse it to make sure that the occurrence of this test never happened. For the future, we want to keep a very strong core. We think that the advantage of Kite uh, over other testing uh, for WebRTC, but other things is the capacity to support mobile, to support uh, native app and web app and so on. This is not something that a lot of people do. Uh, the capacity to support difficult grid configuration. So setting up an iPad OS uh, 1014 is not for the faint of heart, I can tell you. Uh, but that should be completely transparent for the test. The, the test should not care on which platform it, it's running. We want to keep working with people that innovate to stay at the edge and integrate the things before most of the people need them. So we're gonna speak later about AV1 and testing SVC implementation in AV1 to make sure it's good. But we also want to make it easier and cheaper to test. So for example, our lot testing, we don't run on our machine. We give you a, a server for let's say $1,000 a month and then you run it on your own Amazon, on your own Azure, on your own stuff. So we're not, you know, if you have a really large test, you, we, you're not getting an overhead on the cost of, the, of the, each of the machine in your, in your grid. Finally, we want to help people that help others, so the integrators, uh, the reseller, the consultant, 
to adopt those tests so that overall the quality of WebRTC implementation raise and more and more people use this. Right. So that's, that's our plan. So anybody working on SFU or reselling or proxying doing services, come to us. Most of this stuff is open source and free. Have fun. Thank you, Dr. Alex. Uh, do we have any questions? Everyone is ready to go out there and test. Oh, go for the break, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yes, one, one more question. Just for a simple question. I know it's not testing, but is there a notion of, forgive my ignorance, is there a notion of WebRTC service assurance where I can get real-time evaluation that my SFU is working right, that my users are getting video that's clear, not pixelated, is there a? Right, so uh, the answer is we don't go that far because the notion is, is my app doing what it's supposed to do is changing from one app to the other, right? One app logic uh, will be different for another. What we provide is the capacity to automate the test and to no, give you back the metric, but the analysis and the interpretation of those numbers are, are, are left in to the, you, right? WebRTC marketplace, which yes. I'm ignorant of, but you're an expert of, is there a, a, a slice of the marketplace that does the assurance function? I, it doesn't look that like would be, that. That would be, what, the closest I could think about would be what Varun does, which is not only giving you metrics, but uh, helping you interpret them and f make actionable item on top of it. He usually does not replace the need for people telling you, uh, I think the experience in that call was good or bad, and some studies have shown that depending on the country, the expectations were very different. Interesting. Right, you go to India, you go to China, they tolerate much more than people in America and in the US. In, in okay. Thank you. So then, other than that, the closest you have is this. But when it comes to quality of a call, which means quality of the media in real time, there is, t is still an open scientific uh, field and a lot of people, Netflix and so on, are still working on it, meaning there is not a final solution to it yet, really. I, I have a really naive question. I, I was around WebRTC in 2012 where it was, <coughs> I came from Ericsson when it was an Ericsson research start and it was really exciting. Yeah. You mentioned four browsers, but there's, there's desktop browsers and there's mobile browsers, and they all have a different lifetime as well, Correct. right? Correct, so that, that's a good question. So if you look at these numbers here, right. So WPT doesn't run on mobile browsers. Okay. So when they say a four here, it's four on desktop. Yeah. And that's why the, the WebRTC team specifically ask us, Cosmo, to run it with Kite because we can support uh, they ask for Safari on uh, iOS, Chrome on Android, and Firefox on Android. So you see here, for example, I specifically uh, outline the Android Chrome 77 because okay. this is a result that the current WPT cannot achieve automatically. They have to run it manually and feed it manually. Okay. So right now, at the W3C, they do not report and do not really take into account at the standard level body the mobile browser. It's up to the, to the vendor to do that internally and make sure that the mobile version match the result of the desktop version. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. If you if you ran a test with packet loss, yes. then how do you measure your video quality score? Because you're going to lose some frames. So you, you measure the video quality the same way, but there's a lot of things you can actually do before you measure the video quality, right? So this 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 is what you're gonna use for the video quality for a given frame with packet loss. Usually either the frame is dropped or it's pixelized, there are different, depending on the codec, the behavior, the result of the, 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 the reconstructed frame is different, right? So from one codec to the other, you will have different. But those scores, those three scores on the bottom, is more or less what you're gonna have. So for example here, it's not packet loss, but if you reduce the bit rate, 
and you go lower, so you force the codec to, to adapt by lowering the quality or the resolution or both, right? Uh, you're gonna go for 100 score, 100% score, which is, okay, I send 700 and I receive 700, so I'm perfect condition to something that is really degraded. Uh, but before you do that, you want to check if your application detect the packet loss, react to the packet loss, and react in a good way, right? So let's say you have 2% packet loss, but your application tell you you have 1% packet loss. So obviously the application is doing something wrong and, uh, and she will never be able to adapt to the real condition because she's not completely, she cannot see the, yeah. the, the real condition, right? And the same goes for the bandwidth. They, they cannot measure directly the bandwidth, so they have bandwidth estimation algorithm that are quite complicated. There is five or six of them only in WebRTC. <laughs> Uh, so which one, which one is good, which one fits the, well, if you don't have the capacity to control the network and the available bandwidth, you have no ground for, for comparison, right? You don't have no ground truth. Do you, do you have any reports on your website for like comparing the SFUs and which one does better with packet loss? So that. This one was done by just modifying the number of participants. Okay. But you can, and, and the test, the test script and everything to reproduce the result is online and free. Okay. And you can do exactly the same thing, variating the delay, variating the, the jitter, variating the packet loss, or any of those together for any given range. Okay. Right? All right, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Alex.